Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about overfitting. And this is something which we've kind of hinted at a little bit in previous videos. So in the last video, we saw that a relatively simple decision tree was able to get almost 80% accuracy on the Titanic data. But what I'm gonna claim here is that we shouldn't take this result at face value. Because really what you wanna do is to figure out, can we make a model which will predict make predictions on unseen data rather than the data we already have access to. We want to fit the data, but we don't want to overfit the data. And so we're going to explore this in a lot more depth. And by the end of this video, you should really understand what we mean by overfitting. So as usual, we're going to import NumPy as NP from matplotlib import pyplot as plt. And we're going to seed a random number generator. So we do np.random the seed, one, two, three, four. And now we're gonna make a synthetic data set and X is gonna be 10 randomly chosen points. Dot random, dot rand, 10 of them. And we're gonna make Y to be the log of uh, X. And we don't want this to match exactly. So we're also going to throw in some random error where we're gonna send in no, uh, some noise. So np.random.rand n, same length as the input data x. And we're gonna set a standard deviation to be equal to 0.1. So to see what this looks like, let's make a plot. All right, so here's our synthetic data set. If I didn't tell you this was supposed to be log, you'd probably look at this and say, eh, maybe it looks like a line, maybe not. Now that I know it's a log, I can kind of stare at it and see it, but, um, but you know, it kind of just more looks like a line to me personally. Um, in any case, we saw that we could fit data with a straight line the question is, is can we do better with like a quadratic or a cubic or some sort of other higher order polynomial? So the generalization of linear regression to higher order polynomials is called polynomial regression. And the main point of this video is gonna be that polynomial regression is terrible. So I'm not gonna really show you in depth how to do it because I'll be teaching you how to do things bad and we'd also be showing you some stuff that's kind of outside of the rest of what we're doing in this course. But here is the code for polynomial regression. And the return value of polynomial regression is gonna be a model similar to the linear models we were using before. So what we're going to type in two blocks down is something like this of model one is equal to polynomial regression. And then you specify the degree of the polynomial. So you do one for linear, and then you do fit x, y to fit it to the data. And then we're gonna do the same thing with model two. But we're gonna make model two to be a 10th degree polynomial. So it could have all sorts of squiggles, ups and downs. This code's not gonna work yet, don't press enter. The reason why it's not gonna work is for arcane technical reasons. And once again, I'm going to emphasize that the point of this video is that polynomial regression stinks. So don't worry too, too much about it. We need to switch X from being a one dimensional NP array to a two dimensional NP array. So we do this by saying X is equal to X comma none. And what we've done is we've now checked the shape of X to be a 10 by one 2D array rather than just a 10 uh, length 10 1D array. So now we can run this code and see how well it works. All right, model one dot score X and Y. And same thing with model two. Oh, I 
made a goof there. All righty. Forgot to type model two in the line above. So what we can see is model one, our linear model, got 95% accuracy. Personally, I think 95% accuracy is pretty good. And like I said, well, let's look at this thing. You know, you can kind of see, like you can kind of try to draw a straight line between these points with your brain and you can see it's probably going to be pretty darn good. One is perfect, zero is useless. So 95 is pretty good, but wow. Model two, holy crap. Model two, 1.0, perfect, perfect, perfect. And so this is, um, this could be the stop of the video if the world, if this could be the stop of the video, but it's not. That'd be a very misleading place to stop. It looks like right now the solution is if you want to just fit your data awesome, you use a really high degree polynomial and you always win. But let's try to visualize why this works so well. So to do this, we're gonna do some visualization. So we're gonna do fig x equal plt dot subplots. And let's plot our curves at some different points. So we're gonna say x fit is equal to np dot lin space between 0 0.01 and one, a thousand points. And we're also gonna turn this into a, um, into a 2D array. Then we're gonna do x dot plot x fit model one dot predict x fit. So this is the predictions based on model one applied to our synthetic data set, which is why we needed the none type because uh, we need it to be a 2D array in order to apply it. And let's, plant, let's plot this in black. And let's also plot model two, but plot this one in fire brick, one of the nice reddish colors. And let's also plot the original data, which is now going to be x of colon zero, because we only want the first thing, y. And in order for us to be able to see this, we should set the y, x, the y upper and lower limits to have x dot set y limit, y lim is equal to y dot min, and give it a little bit of padding, minus 0.1 y dot max plus one. Positional argument. Oh, yes. When you're using y lim, you need to input a tuple. Okay. So this is our two models. And as we can see, the higher order polynomial works perfectly. It could not work better. All of those blue lines crushes them, splits them right down the middle. And now we need to take a step back and say, okay, this is all well and good, but does it make any sense at all? Any sense at all? And the answer is no, absolutely not. Because we know we, we made this data. It's supposed to be a logarithm. And if you've forgotten what a logarithm looks like, I'm going to show you in the next slide, but it looks nothing the hell like this. And actually, yes, yeah, so let's go do that. Let's show you the logarithm. What the data should look correctly. All right, so we're going to plot this, make the same plot as before, but we're also going to add in a plot of X fit np.log x fit will make this one to be colored equal to blue. And in this graph, let's add some legends. So let's say label is equal to linear model. Label equal to 10th order.
and label equal to true function. Or we mean the true function without the noise. And so in order to be able to see this, we also need to add in axe.legend. But this is basically going to be the same plot as before with an extra blue line showing us the curve we're trying to get. What did I do wrong? It says, ah, oh, yes, color needs to be blue in quotation marks. Black in quotation marks, Firebrooks in quotation marks, everything gets a quotation. So what we can see from this picture, the red line is great at 10 selected points and absolute garbage everywhere else. So this picture here is the picture that describes over, overfitting. If I only had 30 seconds to teach you what overfitting was, I would show you this picture and then I would say stare at it for 29 more seconds. So that's our picture of overfitting. But let's also explore this a little bit more quantitatively by testing out the performance on new data. So for this, we can type in x new is equal to np.random.randn10. So it's same distribution as before. This is going to be the exact same line as before, x new plus 0.1 times np dot random dot rand normal length of x new. And then we're gonna have to do that same pre-processing stuff of x new is equal to x new colon none. And now let's look at the new score. So let's trust that a model on model one dot score x new, y new, model two dot score, x new, y new. Don't press enter yet. Let's scroll up and see what we think is going to happen. So The black curve looks pretty darn close to the blue curve most of the way. So my intuition is we're probably gonna get something that's still pretty darn good. I'm guessing it's gonna probably be a little bit worse than 95% because I mean, we did design this line based on those 10 specific points. So it's probably not gonna be quite as good as 95. The red line here, except for those 10 points, it's just terrible. It's not even close. To the blue line and you know what even on the those 10 points a lot of the time it's like not even really that close to the blue line it's actually it's going through the blue dot which is the data point but the data point includes the random error so the red line is like paying more attention to the random error than the blue line which is what we want to care about so i'm claiming model one still going to do pretty good Model two, gonna be terrible. And if you're watching this video, that means I was correct because if I turn out to be wrong, I'm gonna stop and record this video again. But for the record, this is try number one. So let's go. All right. So model one, it got 80% accuracy. 80% accuracy or loosely speaking 80% score is still a pretty good score. Not as good as 95. Pretty good. Model two got negative 70,179. Now, without me even telling you how bad that is, I think you can take a guess. It is terrible. How terrible is it? If you had just guessed zero for every single point, which is generally considered to be a useless model because you're just like randomly taking the same guess every time without any input from the data, that gets you a score of zero. So model two is not only worse than useless, it is 70,000 points worse than useless. So like I said, here is the code 
for polynomial regression. Never look at it again, except for in very, very limited potential contexts. But this is our introduction to overfitting. It's the phenomenon in which a machine learning model fits random noise rather than the true signal. It leads to very good performance on the training set and absolute terrible generalization. Part of the problem is flexibility. And when your model is too flexible, then what it's able to do is it's able to use this additional flexibility to, to model the random fluctuation and miss the actual point that it should be focusing on. And this leads into another natural point, which is it's very important to get the right level of model complexity. You want it to be complex enough to be useful, but not so complex that you overfit. And in a couple of videos, we're gonna learn a systematic way for dealing with this called cross-validation. All right, that's it for this video. I'll see you again next time.